good day welcome to another class another tutorial and today we'll be considering how to analyze your stream you need to learn how to analyze your stream we've succeeded in learning how to add components how to select the right flip package and how to add material stream then check out your water content and today it's all about stream analysis and we're working on the same simulation case which is a tutorial high C simulation case so i'm going to be calling it up i'm calling it up okay so let's use um stream one as our case study okay we'll be running some analysis on this stream analysis like um finding out the critical properties finding out um different properties at different conditions and um, also going to be um, looking out for hydrate formation and analysis of the stream that is if hydrate would form at the particular condition that this stream is existing at so i need to open up the stream okay so to look out for this particular um analysis we need to click on attachments all right we'll click on attachments and click on analysis all right are we together so we we'll click on analysis the next step is to click on create click on create now there are different types of stream analysis that we have here if you're looking out for your boiling point curve okay you can click on boiling point curve so let's add boiling point curve create if you're looking out for your co2 freeze out temperature you click on co2 freeze out if you want to analyze um code properties if you want to analyze your um critical properties to check out for your critical temperature pressure and all of that you want to check out for your envelope utility okay envelope utility click on add you want to check out on your hydrate formation temperature and pressure if you want to check out for um, different properties at different conditions you use your property table okay so now for others why i'm not calling up others we want to check out for your user property we don't have any particular property that, that is user defined so we won't be needed the needing the user property um analysis you use this um probably when you're doing your oil and oil characterization you define your sulfur that's to to impute sulfur content in your crude oil you can come over here and analyze your sulfur but for now we don't have any user defined property so we won't be using this analysis same with petroleum assay and um, piping so let's go straight to running this analysis so the first one we'll be checking out for is the boiling point curve so to check out for your boiling point curve highlight this click on view okay now you see the name the name is boiling point curve object type we are running the stream analysis not three section separator condenser so stream now which stream are you working on stream one if you want to change it you select object and select the stream you want to analyze okay but for now we are running analysis on stream one now check out the basis we have three different um, types of basis the mole fraction mass fraction and liquid volume basis so we can change it to more fraction basis or we'll run our analysis on liquid volume all right so everything has been selected you click on performance now this is your result aspen high csp will break everything into cut points okay and also um get true boiling point at each of the cut points now if you click on the critical properties you see the cut point the critical temperature pressure a centric factor everything will be generated by high cis, the molecular weight at each of these cut points and the liquid density okay so 
the next thing we look the major thing we are looking at or oh, is the um boiling point curve so if you click on plots the dependent variable is a boiling point curve because that is what you're looking for so high six will plot this curve for you all right now you have your um temperature against volume percent so this is your boiling point curve this is your boiling point curve so here you run your analysis if your dependent variable is critical temperature not the boiling point now everything will be um calculated for you and plotted for you so this is where you run your boiling point analysis you're checking out for your aesthetic factor everything will be plotted for you so that is for your boiling point call now the co2 freeze out CO2 freeze out this particular analysis is used to check out for um, the temperature at which the CO2 content of your gas stream okay CO2 content of your gas stream will start forming crystals all right for this particular um, stream we don't have CO2 in it all right so let's see what the analysis is going to look like and when you click on view same thing you have the name CO2 freeze out select the particular um, stream you want to analyze now what's your base component methane okay now the phase the phase we have different types of phase vapor liquid and aqueous so when you're leaving it at auto select high automatically selects any of the phases and run calculation for you so for now when you check out this this is the freezing temperature so at this temperature if we have co2 in this particular stream as we have co2 in the stream now this is the temperature at which crystals will start forming minus one eight one point seven one four one degrees celsius okay now the cri crystal will start for forming from from um the liquid phase all right now but look at this formation flag it will tell you that crystal co2 crystals will not be formed why because we don't have co2 in this particular stream all right so that is how to run your um your co2 freeze out analysis now if you have um, co2 in this stream and the flag is still telling you that co2 um, free, um freeze what's called the crystals in off form at this particular temperature it means you have to maintain a temperature okay temperature above this to make sure that the crystals is not formed when you're transporting the fluid okay that's for co2 freeze out now for code properties all right you with the code properties um you can check out your code points on the astm d86 and them um, cracked reduced from your performance all right from your performance now here you can also see your viscosity at different uh, temperatures all right the next you can check out for is your critical properties when you click on your critical properties here heist is able to generate your critical temperature your critical pressure pseudo critical pressure down to your um, compressibility factor that's your true compressibility factor and um, your pseudo compressibility factor so all these will be generated by heist so that's for your critical um properties now for the envelope utility this helps you to plot graphs of different um relationship okay you have the pressure temperature utility now this will help you find out now if you look at this envelope this area is your subcood region and this area is your superheated region while, while i was teaching you on how to um calculate your dew point and your temp um bubble point temperature i told you that the dew point temperature has to do with okay the temperature at which you experience your first dew meaning that um your, your fluid was existing originally at the vapor phase for example this is a superheated region so let's assume this gas is existing or was this particular fluid was existing in gas phase now when you start condensing this gas 
start condensing it all right now at this point at this point this is where you will discover your the first droplets of your liquid at minus 31.8 that's a critical um temperature okay so this is the first at this pressure that you experience the first droplet of your liquid now if you're heating if you're heating this is where the phase start changing this is where you discover the first um the first drop or the first bubble as the case may be sorry the first bubble so this is where you experience that at this particular pressure so this is what the envelope utility helps you to also do you can also check where you your hydrate will start forming all right where your hydrate will start forming so this is your if you look at this thin thin line all i did was to click on hydrate i clicked on hydrate i had to bring out this blue line can you see it can you see it so if you check from this temperature a temperature of minus 2.838 to a temperature of about 22.12 that's the hydrate formation temperature zone all right so you have to look for a way to maintain the flow of your fluid outside this particular temperature else within this temperature region hydrate will form and this might lead to corrosion and pipeline to affect it might affect your production okay and also affect um um the end product at the end of the day so you must look for a way it either by dehydrating this gas stream you need to dehydrate the gas stream to reduce the water content in order to also reduce the hydrate formation temperature now down here you can also change your um envelope type instead of pressure temperature relationship it can be pressure pressure volume it can be pressure enthalpy is your pressure entropy um curve your temperature volume curve this is your temperature enthalpy your temperature um, entropy so let's go back to our pressure temperature relationship now you can also come to table this is where you have um, all your data is generated now you have your pressure temperature different pressure different temperature so at this temperature and at this pressure this is what the volume will be this is what the enthalpy will be at this pressure and this temperature different values so HISIS helps you to generate all that so that's all about the envelope utility all right so for the hydrate formation okay now this helps you to check for hydrate formation temperature the exact temperature where the hydrate will start forming all right so i like using um changing my model to CSM model okay CSM model this model was developed by um, the Colorado School of Mines and then uh, this is used to find the hydrate formation temperature of fluids or any liquid any any liquid you are analyzing any any fluid you are analyzing okay you can also use the other um, model that's the NG and Robinson but I like using my CSM for some reasons because this model um, follows the formulation of Van der Waals and Plateau, okay. Now, another thing you need to discover is that CSM model can be used for all possible scenarios. That's talking about the vapor hydrate, liquid hydrate, aqueous hydrate, vapor liquid hydrate, and vapor aqueous hydrate. Then also, it can also be used for vapor liquid um, aqueous hydrate, where liquid refers to a hydrocarbon liquid, okay so i that this is my best model for checking out for um for hydrate formation now when you're using pen grobinson srk and the glycol property package it is advised to use your csm model okay to 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 run um your hydrate formation um analysis okay now if you haven't selected your model let's go to the hydrate formation um stream conditions now hydrate formation flag is telling the hydrate in all form so at this particular temperature and pressure that this is existing at it's telling you that this will not form now 
what type of hydrate will, will be formed at this particular temperature it te it's telling you the hydrate type that there is no type of formation that will be formed here now if you want to check out the performance this is where you check out the temperature at which hydrate will form for this particular um, fluid now but with all the parameters we have at hand the temperature and the pressure now no hydrate will be formed but that doesn't mean that there is no existing temperature and pressure that hydrate will be formed at for this particular field so what do we need to do we go to performance okay if you go to performance you discover that hydrate will be formed at minus 30.4050 degrees celsius so all you need to do is to maintain your um this fluid at a particular temperature and pressure that is outside this temperature and outside this pressure if you don't do that type 2 um hydrate will be formed and this might be dangerous to your production or the transportation of this fluid so that's the essence of hydrate formation analysis you need to know the temperature and you need to know the pressure at which hydrate will be formed so you can try as much as possible to dehydrate your gas okay in order to reduce your hydrate formation temperature okay another thing i want to show you is how to generate various properties all right so the property table is used to generate different um properties for this particular field for any particular field you're analyzing you're generating different properties at different conditions okay now if you check check out this dialog box you will see independent variables okay these variables are not dependent now after selecting the independent variables you go ahead and select your dependent variables now we have two independent variables this means this is what high seas will try to alternate to give you the dependent variable the dependent property as the case may be now let's assume we want to check out for viscosity of this fluid at different temperatures and different pressures what we need to do now is to check for the variable okay the variable we want to use is temperature variable 2 is what pressure now if you check the mode we have incremental incremental now we have for the mode we have two types of mode we have the states and incremental now incremental means that you have a lower bound and you have an upper bound and you have number of increments now if our upper bound is 200 and our lower bound is 100 and our increment is 10 it means that high six is going to generate different temperatures okay with difference in 10 that is 100 110 120 till we get to 100 same with pressure if the lower bound is 100 and the upper bound is 200 it means that high seas will generate different pressures okay with um an increase with 10 kilopascal h so you have 100 110 120 till you get to 200 kilopascal now you can as well increase the increments i can as well um change my increment to 20 okay now what this means that I should generate some data at um, an interval of 20, that's 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, to get to 200. Now, but if you're using this um, state mode, you will specify, you're not using increments, so you're going to specify your values. You'll be entering your values, okay? So let's say we're using... Um, 10 kilopascal 20 kilopascal so you enter the state mode yourself 30 kilopascal 40 kilopascal so here how many values we have here we have 100 120 140 160 180 and 200 that's about six values so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 kilopascal. So that about six values too. So what I need to do, I come over to my dependent properties. 
okay we want to generate different viscosities okay viscosity at different temperature and different pressure so let's look for viscosity excuse me okay Okay, let's check out for the phase enthalpy at this, um, different temperature and different pressure. Okay, so we've selected phase enthalpy. So let's choose overall enthalpy. I'll click OK. So initially, so it was telling us to select dependent property. But presently, it's telling us to calculate. So all we need to do is to run, click on calculate. And high seas will generate everything for us. So we go to performance. All right. So at a temperature of 100 and 10, um, 100 degrees Celsius and pressure of 10 kilopascal, we have an enthalpy of minus 7767.2 and the phase will be vapor. So at 120, it's going to run that for you um, till you get the last, that's a 200. Okay, so you get to 200. So that's how to run your analysis, your stream analysis using Aspen Hysis. I guess um, with this on your own, you can try out something. You can um, create your own um, stream and run analysis on it based on what you want to do. And from the next class, we'll start um, designing different unit operations. We'll be designing the cooler, heat exchanger, pump, condenser, compressor, heat exchanger, distillation column, absorber, and um, other unit operations. Okay, like the mixer, the T, and um, um, three phase separator, the two phase separator, and what you can use them for. So, thank you for your time as we await the next class. All right.